good afternoon and thanks all of you who have already joined to uh, it's still uh, 3:35 so we can start now so far 24 participants have already joined uh, today our day 8 uh, topics is uh, network monitoring and our instructor uh, md mehdi hassan uh, network engineer ict cell dhaka university so now i would like to request uh, md mehdi hassan to conduct today our webinar course. I think uh, maybe you can start now. Thank you, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening. Uh, just sharing my screen. Okay. Today, our uh, session named uh, Webinar on Network Monitoring System. I am Mary Hassan, uh, working as a network engineer at University of Dhaka. Uh, this org uh, program is organized by Portugalese uh, Science and Technology University and sponsored by Asia Connect uh, Tennis CC and co-funded by European Union. And I uh, thank to Portugalese Science and Technology University to invite me for this session as an instructor. Today, I will cover uh, the following topics on uh, network monitoring, uh, like uh, network operation center, network monitoring management systems, useful tools, and their uses uh, uh, different technologies in the monitoring system. So this is actually uh, the standard picture of a network operation center because of uh, the all the network operation uh, done by a network operation center. And this is for a large organization actually. And for the small organization, uh, most of the case that they don't have any special place for network operating uh, center and uh, the regular engineer actually maintain uh, the activities of network operation center but uh, this is the traditional picture of a uh, dedicated network operation center and it looks uh, there are lots of uh, monitor uh, they uh, actually uh, representing uh, many metrics many statistics uh, the performance utilization of the network So uh, the main activities performed uh, by uh, network operation center, uh, especially network monitoring, and they also responsible for incident response, uh, communication with uh, the management uh, with uh, email, voice, and texting. Uh, they are always monitoring performance, quality of service, and optimization, uh, reporting uh, for the utilization, they also uh, some cases are responsible for minor software installation and minor troubleshooting. Uh, they, they are also responsible for patch management, backup management and monitoring. Uh, also they perform uh, the firewall configuration and firewall uh, monitoring. The key challenges of uh, network monitoring are mainly the lack of collaboration and co coordination across the team because uh, this is very much important uh, to troubleshooting any problem uh, in the network. This is a teamwork actually, but uh, the main challenge that we are uh, professional always facing that is uh, the collaboration and coordination. And sometimes uh, troubleshooting time is uh, consuming very high customer uh, lose their uh, temper also sometimes uh, when it's took uh, more than 24 hours because we uh, nowadays we all of us depending on uh, internet and uh, we, all the network service provider actually the main service provided by internet service actually so uh, another uh, uh, challenge is uh, there are lots of tools so we have to depend on uh, multiple tools so we have to gather knowledge on the different tools how to use it and how to yeah, that's information using these tools. I'll show you uh, some practical uh, in lab, uh, how to configure, install the, 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 the different network monitoring tools and how to use uh, in uh, our network operation to gather information uh, regarding problem, utilization and performance. Uh, these are the some uh, screenshot actually uh, I took from uh, the different kind of uh, network monitoring tools. So uh, there are lots of tools, but uh, no no a single tools actually provide all the solution. So we have to use different type of tools for different kind of solution. Like uh, 
we use Neguez for availability and uh, uh, create a report on availability. So it's a very lightweight software and very much robust for reporting the availability. It goes, it goes down, it's taking immediately and uh, sending notification also through email, through SMS, and sometimes it also has API to integrate some chatting application like uh, Telegram, WhatsApp also. Another, uh, these, these tools actually use for the uh, graphing uh, for the customer utilization because we are service provider always provide uh, internet bandwidth. So uh, it is very important to show our customers uh, about the utilization of bandwidth, uh, how much they consume and how much they purchase actually. And this is actually depend uh, for the making decision to increasing or decreasing the uh, bandwidth. These tools uh, actually used for uh, analyze purpose. Uh, this is actually packet analyzing tools, NMSEN. Uh, this is collect at the sample of uh, the uses of uses by the user and analyze uh, actually which site uh, uses by most and which type of application use uh, mo most of the user using. Uh, this is totally for analyze. Uh, another this is a uh, skin sheet from LibreNMS. I also show you how to configure and build LibreNMS and connect device to monitor. This is a very uh, resourceful, featureful tools. Uh, they provide almost uh, uh, the other tools like uh, uh, Neguez and Tacti. Uh, both uh, both the features are available in this single tools because it it, it is also. Uh, provide the, the availability report and uh, graphing for utilization and in details for others metrics like CPU utilization, storage utilization, memory utilization, and also uh, provide uh, the inventory uh, for the device uh, added in these tools. And uh, these tools actually use for uh, centralized log management uh, you know, uh, uh, log is very important uh, for uh, diagnostic and troubleshooting. So the, it is actually collect uh, from uh, different device stored in a single database. And this is the visualized tool that is also uh, provided search engine for, uh, suppose I need uh, uh, searching uh, how, how many errors uh, contains in a device. So it is possible to search uh, category wise uh, in a particular device using these tools. Uh, this is actually a diagram uh, collect from uh, the weather map. Uh, this is actually create a uh, live uh, network weather actually. This is not our uh, main weather actually. Uh, this is creating a uh, pictorial view of the network and their utilization also uh, how many bandwidth uh, use in the particular link and uh, some cases we have a uh, uh, redundancy link that, that is also possible using this tool. Uh, Whistling uses uh, how much bandwidth uh, actually, actually this is show a real time pictorial view uses of a network. So uh, this is actually two part. One part is uh, network monitoring. Another part is network management. So uh, today and tomorrow I, I discuss about uh, the network monitoring part only and uh, next week I will discuss about uh, the management. So what is first actually covered in the monitoring? Uh, this is actually check the status of a network. So which type of, type of status? The one type, uh, one is uh, device status. Another one is uh, service or application status. Device status means uh, device power on or off. So this this we measure by uh, availability. Uh, device are uh, most of the uh, device are uh, router switches, uh, different type of server. This is actually the main hardware device used in a network. And today we also monitor UPS uh, power distribution unit also, and some cases. Uh, you know, uh, today all of the electronic device comes with uh, IoT. So uh, we have option to monitor air cooler, 
monitor UPS, uh, monitor uh, IP surveillance system also. This uh, all of the hardware part are actually under the system and device uh, we, we are monitored. Uh, another part is actually the service or application we are using uh, on top of this device actually. Suppose uh, in router we using a different type of routing protocol like OSPF, DEEP, PGP. So we have to monitor uh, different different routing protocol and their performance also. Not only the bandwidth utilization is not enough to uh, uh, maintain a largest or commercial network actually. In Swisses, we, we have to monitor the VLANs, uh, STP, and their port utilization. This is actually the application run uh, under the Swisses. And in the server, we server part, we used uh, different application like DNS, web service. Mo today, uh, most of the uh, application actually are the web application. This is actually uh, Browsed by HTTP or HTTPS protocol. Uh, another important uh, service is email service. So in the email service, we have different type of protocol like SMTP, POP, IMAP. So we have to differently monitor uh, this kind of services, uh, different, different. And uh, we we are using a uh, different type of database like MySQL, uh, uh, Microsoft SQL, Postgres SQL and also have uh, no SQL database like MongoDB. So we have to monitor all the applications. So we have to choose uh, the monitoring tool uh, that has the capability uh, cover all of I discuss uh, like uh, monitor cap monitoring capability of device and monitoring capability of service and applications. Uh, in the management part, uh, this is actually the process of uh, successfully operating management and also uh, some managing some resources like uh, in uh, network environment we have to monitor many things uh, we have to manage many things uh, one thing is very common we have to manage uh, the ip address management and vlan management so this these are the part of the management so I will discuss about that uh, in details in uh, next week. So, uh, now question is come why do you uh, do you need actually monitor so i already uh, answered uh, this this question already because we need uh, the system and service disable we need the all the devices available we need their utilization we need their performance performance in, in details the round trip time throughput uh, fault and outages and we need also any device or any service uh, in under attack or not. So all of this, we need actually monitoring system. So our monitoring tools provide time-to-time uh, -time information about these services. So another option is maintain uh, the service level agreement. Service level agreement actually the commitment between customer and service provider uh, how much i am able to ensure uh, the availability of my service uh, in my next slide uh, there is a calculation about the services uh, sla commitment like if i commit 90% uh, of sla this is available then i am capable to take a downtime 36 day in a year 72 hours in a month and 16 hours in a week. It's a very, very worse cases. So the standard cases we calculate 49 actually, 99.99. Uh, this is actually a commitment for only downtime 52 minutes in a year and four minutes in a month and one minute in a week. So if I uh, capable to ensure this 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 SLA 49. That is a good network. 
so they, there is a calculation how to calculate uh, this sla so i'm not going to discuss uh, more because uh, as today is a very tight schedule i have to cover many things and i have a plan to show you a lab uh, how to uh, install and configure a network monitoring tools also uh, connect device uh, so that's why i am go, uh, going faster yeah, in the slide this is the option of establishing a baseline baseline means uh, suppose uh, uh, my customer i provide a network service or internet services to my customer so every time they have to monitor uh, the performance like uh, suppose we measure or, or always we measure uh, in terms of bandwidth the how how much bandwidth uh, we are getting but uh, this is not a point to calculate uh, the performance of a network so there is a, another baseline suppose i am getting uh, the round trip type to google how much uh, how much i getting the big type to uh, time to facebook uh, this this tools name uh, smoke thing uh, tomorrow i will show you these tools and the uses of these tools so yeah with these tools uh, we, are, we are capable to calculate uh, the latency across path the jitter across path and with uh, using the bnms we, we can able to calculate load on link calculate percentage uh, the resource utilization and the typical amount of noise and based on the baseline sometime we detecting attack suppose uh, look into this graph the as usual uses in uh, in between 100 mbps but in this time this spike to 500 time more it's jump to 400 mbps upload and download this is not a normal behavior so uh, easily we have decided uh, that uh, in this time something happened wrong it's, most probability to that time a uh, attacker uh, attacked this network actually. So maybe the, maybe just yes. one question. Yes. Uh, uh, just in your slide number, I think uh, why do we monitor? Uh, if you open, there is a uh, throughput or throughout. Is uh, one participant raised a question? Is it throughput or throughout? Uh, this I is throughput, throughput, throughput. Okay. This is okay. okay. I think misspelling mistake. Okay. I think Noxin, you have uh, get the answer. Throughput, it's throughput. Okay, you can continue. Okay. Oh, another announcement you have to uh, uh, listen me very carefully or go through my slide uh, because your uh, today's exam question based on this slide actually so uh, the year school monitoring tools are uh, in terms of performance monitoring the cacti and libnms uh, today i'm actually talking about the open source software actually uh, they uh, you may uh, download from the internet and use it uh, free of cost so Kaki and libnms is a best tools for uh, performance monitoring and um, uh, they are provide uh, the traffic traffic utilization port utilization cpu ram uh, dx and processes this this also provide in uh, in text or in Kaki, uh, it create a graph for the traffic utilization, port utilization, and CPU utilization. Uh, and the, for the availability monitoring, Negris is the best tool as an open source. So this is also uh, open source and uh, you may use uh, free of cost. Uh, this is very uh, popular tools for uh, availability monitoring of server, different type of service already I discussed, router, switches, and environment device, environmental device like UPS, uh, 
power distribution we need. And for the reliability monitoring, uh, smoke thing is the best tool. Uh, uh, this is able to monitor connection health, uh, round trip time, uh, service response time, and zeta. And for the traffic analysis, uh, NetFlow is the best tools for capturing data from the gateway router and analysis this traffic and reporting uh, the traffic pattern uh, on the user uses. Uh, for the ticketing system, uh, they also provide some uh, uh, open source solution like uh, RT, resource, uh, request tracker, OTRS, and track. This is uh, we are using for the customer relationship management also. And uh, for the configuration management, we use uh, RANSID for router backup and configuration. And also, we need a network documentation tools uh, like create inventory uh, of the devices we are using and another tools for uh, IP address management. So next week, I will show you in details in this two because uh, these two part actually uh, the management part. And I will try to cover uh, these two tools in the next week. So while the uh, tools are uh, isn't best or isn't less, actually, uh, there is nothing actually isn't less. Isn't less also uh, depend on the standard protocol. Or we know the name of the, uh, the SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol. And isn't best is uh, specialized, uh, isn't uh, provided by the tools, actually. This is uh, their own tools. So this call uh, isn't based and isn't less. That is actually depend on the standard uh, network monitoring protocol actually. So both have some advantage and disadvantage. So in isn't based, it's required to install a client or isn't software in every device we want to monitor. So in that case, uh, we are using the routing and switching devices they don't have any option to install customized software but if you talking about uh, a windows like windows uh, linux mac so there there is an option for install any software uh, made by them made by them or made for them uh, in agentless no client or agent actually required to install because it's already comes with the standard protocol snmp so I already discussed about that. Many devices does not support to install a uh, client agent. Uh, this is actually our uh, router, switches, or other network devices. Uh, in that case, the standard protocol is for all the tools. The advantage is agent based. Uh, the provide uh, broader, deeper monitoring beyond what agentless can monitor. These are information that's then SNMP, CIM, and WMI. A SNMP, CIM, and WMM, both three are standard actually, comes with device. SNMP is very common and broadly used, but it is a network bandwidth efficient because it took smaller data because uh, the processing done in the client they send only the matrix in snmp all the processing done in network monitoring server and this is also better for security because uh, they maintain their own security policy uh, in server and client and this is use resource uses uh, because uh, they just uh, network device uh, send the data and all the processing done in the network monitoring server. So now I'm uh, discuss about the simple network management protocol. Uh, this is very uh, standard and broadly used uh, the protocol for monitoring. So 
it has some component uh, uh, one is snmp manager that is actually run in the uh, monitoring server devices uh, they can uh, manage uh, uh, the information comes from the uh, monitor device and they can manage everything another uh, component is managed device managed device means uh, the clients uh, actually run the snmp services to send uh, monitoring related data to the monitoring server actually another one is snmp agent snmp agent actually responsible for collecting data stored data uh, another two component one is snmp mip management information base because based on this data we are able to uh, uh, we are able to store data in the database or uh, graph because this is the database structure actually if i uh, compare with our relational database if we have a table then we can store data based on the structure on that table suppose we, uh, i have a table name with student uh, we can store uh, student id number student first name student last name uh, student registration number and their department and their service they register in this semester is that very similar like that uh, based on the management information base we can able to store device uh, utilization bandwidth utilization on the port uh, cpu utilization of the devices this all are dependent this is actually the uh, structure of a relational database table to store monitoring data uh, this is snmp oid this is actually the object identifier object identifier this is a single column name uh, like uh, in the student table we we, we may identify the student by their student id it's, it's like similar uh, oid actually represent the object identifier and snmp has the many version the first version they released the snmp version one uh, this is actually was a 32 bit counter and that is why uh, that person is not able to uh, measure utilization more than one gbps so it's able to uh, uh, measure uh, 999 mbps so when bandwidth uh, goes because all the matrix stored in bytes bit size so in 32 bit counter that's why it's not able to uh, measure more than one gbps and version 2 c uh, that's come also uh, 64 bit and a security feature because version 1 uh, that was not any security feature this is open so version 2 with uh, comes with a security feature this is called community string uh, this is also a plain text authentication and shared secret so if i uh, set a community string uh, this is most commonly used uh, public by default community string so if i know the uh, any device ip address i can able to connect all the management information using uh, snmp with the community string public so uh, that is still a disadvantage but version 3 overcome uh, that disadvantage because in version 3 uh, there is an option for authentication and encryption So these are the reference. I collect the information for this slide. So you may ask any question regarding this slide. Okay, one question. Uh, what is throughput and bandwidth? Bandwidth actually the capacity, maximum capacity of a channel uh, that is called bandwidth. Throughput the actually utilization how much capacity utilized this is actually measured by throughput any question i have no questions Okay, one question. Uh, what do you mean by GTAR? 
जीटर एक्चुअली मेजर्ड बाय राउंड टिप टाइम so the expecting time and the calculating time that is the uh, major actually jitter okay so is there any other, any question related to this theory part because i need more time in lab part uh, sir uh, today session duration is until 5:30 yes 5:30 5:30 so uh, i have only yeah. one and half an hour one and half hour okay Actually, another question: What is good put? Difference between good put and throw put? Uh, no good good put. Good put, I am not familiar with this term. But uh, I did not use this uh, in a network performance. Okay, so just another question: TTL time to live one. TTL. What this is, is actually TTL? round trip time. Suppose I send a packet and. Uh, the response in between this time actually uh, call ttl okay. i think no other question you can proceed next okay so at first i have to prepare a uh, linux server to install a uh, libdnms so that is why i, I make a virtual machine with uh, dmr workstation I already showed in my last session how to create a virtual machine and how to install also some uh, Linux, uh, some basic Linux system administration idea. So today I'm not going to discuss about this. If you are interested, maybe it's a, a recorded video uh, still available in the website. Say the virtual machine name LibreNMS and the operating system version. I use Alma Linux 8. So I said uh, the number of CPU to code is good enough. And memory in that case, I select 8 GB. For faster installation, so I have to create a virtual hard drive. Thirty GB is good enough. So now I have to browse. Uh, this is Alma Linux ISO. Okay, it's created. Now I'm going to install the operating system. Next, so at first I have to connect the network in our network interface and set the time zone 
and verify if the network time is on or off. Select installation destination, just click done. Because uh, this is fresh VM, so I don't have to think about the default data, previous data. That's it, the root password. Uh, select uh, the minimum installation with some tools like standard development tools, security tools, and system tools. The support of legacy Unix compatibility. Click begin install. So it looks at 10 minutes, around 10 minutes. In the installation server, check uh, this is actually the network topology, uh, because uh, to showing a network monitoring, obviously, I need a network. So I'm conducting this class uh, from my laptop, uh, and that's why uh, I am not able to showing any network device. If it is uh, the physical workshop, then I uh, collect some uh, router switches and connect them and show you. So so that uh, I create a virtual network lab with the GNS3. And um, this is actually very time zone. to prepare this lab. Actually, I need uh, more than two hours. So I already created. I just collect the information from those devices as a monitoring device. So at first, I start uh, the gateway router. This is uh, the router one. This is done with uh, the Cisco software. I have to ensure the network connectivity between my host and the virtual server. Now I am installing so the IP address is 192.168.20.55. So now I am set. Ping command. Twenty dot fifty five. So I am getting the response. So someone question about the, the TTL. TTL actually the value, the lifetime of this packet actually is very uh, depending on the uh, operating system. So after that time. So you, you may get uh, the request time out or something like that. Uh, this is actually uh, the round tip time. So I'm sending a request uh, to that router. I'm getting response within six milliseconds. Uh, this is actually the RRT. So the minimum value was uh, six millisecond, maximum value was uh, 12 millisecond, and the average time is seven millisecond. This is called jitter. Okay. This is actually RRT, round trip value. The approximate round trip time, the minimum round trip time was 6 millisecond, maximum was uh, 12 millisecond, average was 7 millisecond. And 7 millisecond is the value of jitter. 
TTL means the lifetime actually. RTT means round trip time. I already told about that. And deviation of RTT, this is called zeta. This represents average RTT. So I power on another router. There is actually no relation between RTT and TTL. TTL is a lifetime of a packet. Suppose I sending a request to you and you answering or not is depend on TTL value. And RTT is the calculating time, how much time is required to how much time not required how much time is took to send and uh, receive the packet actually This is also another Cisco router. So to reach this router, uh, actually I have to configure a, a static route in my Windows operating system uh, because it's a different network uh, than my host PC. 
because uh, I have a network interface with the same IP address range 192.168.20 series. Uh, uh, this is totally different network. This is 192.168.40 network. That's why I have to configure a static route to this the router two. Suppose uh, the for the router one, uh, the interface gigabit interface two, two by zero is connected with IP address one ninety two one sixty eight twenty dot fifty five. That's why I easily reach it twenty dot fifty five. Um, I have a interface with the IP address. this 20 to 1 that's why i don't need any routing configuration to reach the router one but to reach router two router three i have to configure route in my host pc so to do that there is a command uh, this is for windows so to this uh that network actually uh this is actually the gateway 20.55 so i copy this command now it is okay and now i we get ping from the 40.2 and This is actually not part of uh, this session, but uh, to show you the different metrics of from uh, the different type of network device, I have to do that. In real life, so you have already a network and you have to configure monitoring tools for that network. And uh, to complete this lab, you have to very resourceful hardware actually. Uh, my laptop actually running with a uh, Core i7 CPU and 20 gigabyte of RAM. That's why I'm capable to running multiple devices. Uh, now it's running four routers, one switch, and another server also running installation. So our installation is complete. So now I'm going to get in from 40. Dot. Yeah. So still not powering on. So it is, it is actually Juniper router. So it took more time than other device boot up.
okay so from my host i'm getting response from the wall devices 20.55 40.2, and 40.4. Oh, this is our server. One ninety two one six eight thirty dot one seventy six. This is the IP address of server. So I have to connect another interface with the similar as uh, this network twenty series. That's why I have to add another network interface to the server from the settings. I just add network adapter okay But I have to change another thing. Uh, this is also NAT. I have to change this uh, NAT network to host only because it's connect in between the host actually. That's why I have to shut down this server. Yeah, no issue this is actually a uh, fail some process that's why it's net piece so i have another server key installed i'm able to use this one also this is test install with uh, the same operating system i add network The interface most only.
go to IP or uh, the DSCP IP. So I have to change it to static IP actually. So I set uh, the net adapter IP actually 192.168.30 and 150. And the host only adapter IP 192.168.20.120. Edit and the name one sixty is not adapter one ninety two post only adapter. Uh, this is post only adapter. Configure IP one nine two one sixty eight twenty and one twenty plus twenty four. Uh, this actually not required in gateway. Update dot one fifty. S24 The configuration is done. Check from host. Okay. So I connect with this server using putty. The same thing I have to ensure uh, from the server. At first, I have to ensure I am able to pin all the network devices. Router one, router two, router three, and router four. So to do that, I check it one by one. To do twenty dot fifty five, it's okay. Forty dot two, that is also okay. Three, okay. Four. So I'm getting response from all the network devices I have. So now I start uh, the configuration, installation and configuration LibDNMS network monitoring tools. Uh, this is the configuration document I will share with you. LibDNMS, I already told you uh, this is open source auto discovering network monitoring tool based on PSP, MySQL, and SNMP. And um, it support uh, widely used uh, devices like Juniper, Cisco, Linux, PSD, OSP, and other vendors. Um, it has the features like uh, automatic discovery services like uh, CDP, FTP, LLDP, OSP, FTP, SNMP, and ERP. Uh, it has API access. And it support automatic update, software update, customizable alert service. Suppose one device goes down, it's automatically sent uh, like uh, SMS, email, notification. 
so now i starting configuration uh, it is also support ldap uh, radius and active directory authentication for user authentication so at first i have to configure sd linux in permissive mode either disable so to do that uh, you just have to copy and paste all the command correctly so every command start with a hash character uh, this is actually represent uh, you need uh, administrative access so you don't have to copy with this hash you have to copy after the hash now i check temporary second four zero and verify oh, this is now in pharmacy mode so i have to add an extra repository dpl Uh, this parameter actually for the SA Linux parameter. So uh, there is no authoritative mode. Uh, there is three mode, uh, enforcing mode, permissive mode, and disable mode. In enforcing mode, if I change any system related uh, setting, it's prevent actually that. And in permissive mode, it just create a log, but I uh, it's allow uh, to change any system related terms. And I need the hashed, the, that actually represents the privilege mode. So if you log in with the root user, you automatically got hash access. Either if you uh, log in with any normal user, you just pass the command uh, su, then it's asked for root password and become a root user. So I already select on the time of installation development tools, uh, but I have to verify that all the development tools I have or not. Okay, I have to install some of the software.
så helt klinskal i Jan Stols. Uh, to install and configure a uh, libre latest version, we have to install exactly PSP version 8.1. Not below that and not above that. Only 8.1 currently support, uh, PSP version 8.1 currently support in LibreNMS. If you try with other version, you will fail uh, in the install of LibreNMS. So to do that, I have to another uh, install another repository. This is Remy. Uh, it distributes uh, the PSP latest version to legacy version by this repository. This is the PSP module. Okay, and then select uh, the PSC version 8.1. And I go for install PSP, SNMP, RRD, and other library required by. UPNMS.
One person, this tool is more effective. Uh, leave the NMS is more effective uh, compared with uh, maybe a certain tactic. Okay, all the required software installation is done, but we still now not installed LibreNMS. So we just reconfigure, change the time zone in TSP, the date function, put date time zone information. This year, Dhaka.
set NTP time zone also. Now I have to enable and restart the server. Okay, both are active and running. Verify the PSP are shown is 8.1.10 and module. I have to install, this is already installed, but verify with this command. If it's not installed, then it will install MariaDB server. It's actually the community edition of. MySQL database to enable to replace service with comment MySQL. It's okay. So this is the procedure of set MySQL root password. At this moment, I skip this part. I already in MySQL uh, console. So at first I create a database with name Levy NMS. And create a user with name Levy NMS and password Levy admin with L and A capital. Set privilege that LPNOS database. Now I have to change some parameter in Maria is a database server. MySQL section. This section. Add this license. We start the database service. So now I'm going to install Luffy NMS. Create a Luffy NMS user. Add Luffy NMS user to a passive group. Clone uh, Luffy NMS from the Git Hub repository.
it took some time actually size uh, around uh, more than 200 megabytes Okay. 
Now let's turn. Now we have to change the ownership Libyan MS of this directory. The user Successfully installed. We will check from this user. Going to the RPSP FPM. Change the full name. WW pool, JPNMS. Search. Yes. configuration something in this file. Put double B. That was the issue. Put the money.
okay everything is done now uh, someone notice that the about the typo thank you so my server i think this was 192.168 t dot 120 but i'm not getting any response Anyone guess what is the reason? I'm not getting any response from the server. I put in the common box. If you guess why I'm not getting any response from server. No, I use the IP address, so there is no relation with uh, configuration. Yes, firewall issue. Thank you. This is to come out here. Mm -hmm. So now I'm getting the installation phase and everything is green. That means it's okay. I told you uh, it's required 8.1. I tried with 8.2 or some uh, update version, but that will not uh, that was not work for me. So you have to install PHP 8.1. Um, others requirement also comply that's why i'm getting the green check mark so then i have to click on database configuration database user name was libvnms and database name was also libvnms and password was libvri admin with lma capital check the credential for database uh, that's okay so when i click uh, build database that is actually get all the keyboard tables um, structure done click on key and create a user I create user with username password Remove that this with my own email address. Okay. So, 
to hello dot website so everything is fine that's why we start username and password and finally i have successfully done by installation of the vms Okay, uh, this is good. I have to add host uh, from the device. Click on add device. So, at first, I add device uh, the router one that was right here test 20 dot 55 and community stream i try public this device added see the information this is cisco IS software router model 7200 series C7200. Uh, still now no crap other information because it's required five minutes to come collect data because it's uh, pulling time is five minutes, default pulling time five minutes. So in the meantime, I add other device photo two and this is also tied with community stream public so uh, this device community stream is different so let's verify the community stream so, So running config. So SNMP server with community string NMS lab. So I have put the exactly same community string and I add this to rise. NMS lab, right? This is also added. So now check the device. So if I manually ah. Uh, From the uh, steps are from um, discovery to the resonant
Sure. So two routers is added. Add other two device. Yes. So two so three. Common distance same. Another slab. And another one for the dot four. This is microtech router. And so all four devices are added. So only two uh, data is collected, others two devices uh, data collection required five minutes. So if I'm going to be in uh, router one. So uh, this is the CPU information, the memory information directly it's using a uh, fourteen percent memory, and this is others I/O interface. Uh, this is the temperature details, power details, and um, this is the log from collect collected device. This is actually not a device log. It is actually a communication log between uh, the NMS and the devices. Uh, these are the graph, the health statistic, and CPU, memory, others. This is actually four statistics, four details. The routing details it's in here uh, one routing protocol is uh, configured as deep and neighbor details one neighbor is cisco router another neighbor is microtech router this is the inventory collect all the hardware details for that router how many io card The log, the alert, and there is a function for latency. This is actually work as like smoke thing, but it's only show the latency smoke thing uh, showing in details result. And there is a option to add many host only for uh, the latency details. So this is actually the main function of the DNS. Uh, there is a dashboard also. Uh, we are able to create a customized dashboard. We are able to add device summary. Device. Availability. Top device. So your home screen always show this this dashboard. It's a routing details, memory details for the wall devices, CPU storage.
temperature on uh, different devices and uh, the card on the devices. It's a map or network. Map for reusability. So all of our device has warning because multiple interface virtual devices uh, multiple interface are not connected but administratively up. So I'm happy that I, I, I have covered all the topics in the time, session time. Yeah, you can add any any device uh, that support actually SNMP. Uh, it is also possible to add device uh, without support SNMP. In that case, they can monitor only ICMP, ping monitor. So that's why to do that you have to opt snmp if you want to add uh, the icmp enable based device you just click on snmp opt the snmp feature type the ip address and click add devices just just you may give a name for the camera suppose camera one that's it. So there is a option, <laughs> suggested option like heat vision camera. And you have to put the IP address of camera. And if uh, it has support uh, the SNMP in the camera, so there is no problem on the SNMP and put the SNMP community of your camera. That's it. Any other question? Sadman mm, Shapin, do you have any question? Sadman Shapin, you are raise your hand. Do you have any question? Faisal, can you unmute Sadman Shapin? Or if you have any other question, you can just uh, write down in question answer box about today's lecture. So I hope no question, but I'm happy I have finished all those stuff in due time. Uh, yes, is there any one question? Shriyadur Islam already answered. I think your question has already answered. Which tool is more effective? Already answered. Okay. So do you have any other question? Get the installation file in the website, no problem. I will share the okay. configuration document. A GNS3 okay. a configuration document actually not the part of this session. And I have not actually that. Actually, GNS is GNS topology you have used. That's why probably they asked for the topology. I, 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 I think actually use this topology for uh, collecting information uh, uh, from the device actually. That, that's why I use this topology. Because I need it to show monitoring. Okay. okay. But in the so real, if, real life, uh, you have a network already. Hmm. Okay, for practice purpose, I think they can use this network or you can make a country, uh, make a topology in, uh, Cisco or GNS3, I think you can add the in uh, library and NMS. Uh, so uh, the topology making is required to our class. Okay. So do you have any other what question? difficult tasks then uh, 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 install with the NMS? I think no one have been. Uh, I, I, I will try next week. In uh, first okay. hour, 
first hour so how to how to prepare this topology i think they have already uh, know about the sys about most of our uh, webinar course we have used uh, packet tracer i think they have already uh, know how to design the campus network because previous all courses so, covered this so I, I i i show in uh, in the uh, campus network uh, design workshop how to prepare a campus network in gms3 okay so i think no other question okay thank you very much uh, mehdi for your uh, okay another one oh okay okay thank you mehdi for your presentation today you, so hope we will meet you meet you tomorrow again okay now, faisal can you share the assessment link uh, to the participants through whatsapp group and also the safe uh, group and also in chat box faisal can you hear me okay thank you sir now i am leaving okay okay thank you very much